Okay, let's uh, do an example of a loop analysis. And uh, it's going to take a while, so I've got to try to squeeze this into the 15 minutes. We want to find the currents in the circuit at right. Three steps. We've got to draw the currents. And we'll make that up. We've got to write the current rule based on how we draw them. And then we've got to write the voltage rule for two loops. These are all kid calls. The voltage rule um, says that for any closed loop, the voltages must add to zero. So let's do that. Let's select three currents. Let's say I've got a current going this way. We'll call that I1. This is totally arbitrary uh, as long as they're consistent. When it hits this junction, it's got to split. One of them is going to be I2 and one of them is going to be I3. When I2 and I3 recombine, they'll form I1 back again. Now that's one scenario, but you don't have to do that. Let's pick another one. Let's pick, let's say the currents uh, are going this way. I maybe I1 does this, okay? And when it hits this junction, it's going to split into I2, and the upper current will be I3. So let's go with that scenario. So we drew the currents. Now we've got to write the current rule. And the current rule says, the way I've drawn it, and it all is based on how you draw it, I have I1 splitting into I2 and I3. So that's what the current rule is. Okay, so we've done that. Now we have to, we have three unknowns, I1, I2, and I3. We need three equations. I've just written one. This is equation number one. We now have to come up with two more equations. That's why we need these, the voltage rule. If I make a circuit, so I can make a circuit starting here, go all the way around, come back, and end here. That's one loop. I can go here, go back around, come. That's a second loop. Or I could start here, go through here, and come back around. That would be a third loop. So I can make as many as three loops. But let's just make two. We only need two loops. So let me select a different color here and sketch loop A. Loop A, I'm going to start here. I'm going to go clockwise. I'm going to go from here, and I'm going to go around. And as I go around, the voltage rule states I must add my voltage inputs and subtract my voltage decreases, I hit the 18 volt battery. However, I'm going from a high voltage plus 18 to a low voltage, so I'm losing voltage. So that's going to be a minus 18 volts here. Then I hit this 8 ohm resistor here. Well, ordinarily you would lose voltage as you go through a resistor, but I'm going through backwards. Notice the current is traveling to our left. And what happens is, as the current goes through, it goes, it loses energy as it goes through that resistor. It goes from high voltage, it's losing real kinetic energy, and it goes to a lower voltage on the other side because this is the direction that the current's going through it. So I'm going backwards. I'm going to the right, therefore, therefore I am uh, I'm going up in voltage. I'm going from low to high. So I'm going to add in that voltage. Now, I don't know the actual voltage because I'm going through 8 ohms. But I do know from Ohm's law, V equals IR, that the voltage that I'm going to lose is going to be the current times the resistance. So the current is I3, and the resistance is 8. All right, so I keep going around. I hit the 3 ohm resistor. And I got the same problem. The current says it's high on this side and low on this side. It's reduced the current, so I'm going from low to high. I'm going backwards, so I'm going to increase in voltage there, I3 times 3. I keep going around, I keep going around. Oh, I hit 36. I hit this thing now, but I'm going backwards again. I'm going from the positive terminal to the lower voltage at the ground, so it's a minus 36 there. Finally, I hit the 1 ohm resistor, and once again, I'm going against the, the, uh, the voltage flow. So the voltage here is lower than it is here, and therefore, I'm going from low to high, so that I have to add that in there. So it's going to be the current, I1, times the, the resistance, which is 1, and finally, I'm back where I started from. Let's simplify that a bit. I got a minus 54 uh, plus 11 I3 plus I1 equals 0. 
Well, that's my second equation. All right, let's move on to the next thing here. I'll see if I can squeeze that in here. Now I have to make loop B. And I'm going to make loop B here. I'm going to start here and go around the upper uh, term. And so if I do this, I come around and I hit this battery again. This is loop B in blue. Um, I'm going back. I'm going from positive to negative. I'm going from high to low. So I'm once again, I'm losing voltage, minus 18. I hit the same resistor, the 8 ohm. I'm losing. I'm going from low to high. So I'm gaining voltage there. Um, it's going to be plus I3 times 8. I come around. I hit the 3 ohm. Once again, I'm going from low to high. So I'm gaining voltage, I3 times 3. And now finally, I hit this thing here. Now I hit this battery, the 12 volt battery here. And I'm going from positive to negative. So I'm losing voltage doing in, going in that mathematical direction. I continue past that one. I hit a resistor, which I'm finally going in the direction of the current now. So remember, the current is the voltage is high on this side because that's where the current enters. And when the current leaves, it loses, uh, the energy is lost. So I'm actually losing energy here. So this is going to be minus I2 times 6 IR, and that equals 0. All right, let's simplify that equation a little bit. Uh, we have um, minus 18 minus 12 plus minus 30 uh, plus 11 I3 minus uh, 6 I2 equals 0. All right, there's my third equation. So that's it. Now that's all I have to do. Now I've got an equation. Now check this out. I've got an equation that has I3 and I2 and one that has I3 and I1. So I will only need, what I want to do is I want to start solve simultaneously. So one thing I could do is I could substitute for I1 here by substituting in I2 and I3. So let's do that. Let me just scroll down a little further here. So I'm going to take I2 and I3, and I'm going to plug them in right there. So I get, and let me do this in the appropriate green color here. So this equation is going to come down here. It's going to be minus 54 plus 11 I3 plus I2 plus I3 uh, equals 0. That brings this equation to minus 54 plus 12 I3 plus 1i2 uh, equals 0. All right, that's my second equation, and then I have to use the blue equation. So now, uh, what can I do? Well, I now have to combine this equation and this equation. And here's what I could do. I observe that I've got an i2 here, and I've got a minus 6i2 here. And what I could do is I can multiply this equation by 6, if I multiply this, oops, let's do it this way. If I multiply this, let's go back to the pen here. If I multiply this by 6, I get um, 6 times 54 is 324, minus 324, plus 72i3 plus 6i2. Now what I can do is I can take those two equations and I can add them. I've got minus 30 plus, plus 11i3 minus 6i2. And they're both equal to 0, so they're both equivalent. So now you can see that these cancel out. And um, we know that that's going to equal 0. This is a minus 354 plus 83i3. And let me just scroll down there. 83i3 equals 354. i3 equals 354 divided by 83. And finally, let's see, uh, 354 divided by 83 is 4.27. 4.2. 6.5 amps. There's my uh, first answer. Now, um, 
there's I3. Now, if you want I2, well, just plug it into there. And you will find what I2 is. Minus 54 plus 12 I... Whoops, we know I3. I3 is 4.265 plus I2 equals 0, minus 54, plus 12 times 4.265 is 51.18, 51.18 plus I2 equals 0, and uh, minus 4, I get here a minus 2.82, it's supposed to be I2 here, plus I2 equals 0, I2 equals 2.82 amps. So, so far I've been lucky, all the values have been positive. Um, there's one answer, there's the other answer, and you can find uh, I1.